Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare2 before here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare BAFTA build tutorial. In this tutorial we go ahead and building Moskva, which is the lead ship of the Slava class. The Slava class, Soviet designation project 1164, uh, Atlant, which is uh, Russian for Atlas, is a class of guided missile cruisers designed and constructed in the Soviet Union for the Soviet Navy and currently operated by the Russian Navy. Uh, the design started in the late 1960s based around use of the P-500 uh, Basalt missile and was intended as a less expensive conventionally powered alternative to the nuclear powered Kirov class battle cruisers. All are now armed with the P-1000 Vulcan ASHM missiles developed in the late 1970s to late 1980s. There was a long delay in the program while the problems with the Basalt were resolved. These ships acted as flagships for numerous task forces. All sh ships were built at the 61 Kominar Yard in um, Markaliv, Ukrainian SSR. The class was a follow-up to the Kara class cruiser, which the Soviet Navy typed as a large anti-submarine ship. Constructed at the same shipyard and appears to be built on a stretch version of the Kara class hull. The Slava class was initially designated Black Com 1, and then designated the uh, Kurashian class for a short period until Slava was observed at sea. The SSN-12 launchers are fixed facing forward at around 8 degrees elevation with no reloads available. As there is nothing revolutionary about the design of the class, Western observers felt they were created as a hedge against the failure of the more radical Kirov class. The helicopter hangar deck is located about half deck below the landing pad with a ramp connecting the two. There are currently three of these ships that were built, um, and the Slava here being the um, lead ship of the, or I should say, the Moskva being the lead ship of the class, which I believe uh, was a change of name from the Slava to the Moskva. So overall, pretty interesting uh, ship. I've a fun guided missile cruiser and a uh, fun cruiser to add to your Soviet BAFTA build fleet. We don't have too many Soviet ships, so it's always nice to see a new one. And the Soviets always have, I must say, some of the most unique and um, mean looking ships. And the Slava here lives up to that with the insane uh, portion of the ship being dedicated to missile launchers. So, uh, should be a pretty fun build to add to your fleets. And before we go ahead and dive into taking a look at this build, I do want to go ahead and get special links to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more than you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go and pledge a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a quick request to your choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It is really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, links are always in the video descriptions. With that though, let's go ahead and dive into taking a look at the ship. So Obviously, we have 121, which is the number given to the Moskva. Um, we have the missile launchers, as you can see here, these giant anti-ship ship, uh, missiles here. Uh, definitely pretty intimidating, that's for sure. When you look at the thing, you're just like, well, oh, man, all those missiles there. Like, half the ship is just these huge missile tubes on the sides of the um, conning tower. We also have a forward uh, gun uh, battery, which I do not know the exact um, size of it, but... Yeah, it's got gun batteries here on the front, and I believe there is only actually one on the front. I thought there was one on the back, but there is not. So just one on the front. Uh, we have all obviously all the missile tubes, all the um, sensors, uh, radars, all that stuff uh, for those systems. All the deck detailing, all the various little instruments and uh, portions of it, and all that stuff. As I'm, as you can probably tell, the main armament really of this view, of this ship is going to be its guided uh, missiles. So really, the rest of this ship is just basically to, you know, support those missile systems, and that's basically what we have here. So, uh, all this communication equipment, radars, all that fun stuff. As we continue back, just the same old, same old, um, more of the same. And we do have the helicopter landing pad that's looking on the very back here of the ship. So, uh, overall, pretty uh, cool looking ship and a fun build to add to your Soviet navies. Uh, will look awesome paired up with our Kirov battle cruiser. Um, the uh, Kiev class aircraft carrier we have and the Leningrad and all that stuff just an awesome ship to add in combination to those and 
um, just really kind of reinforces that Russian doctrine of more fit as many missiles and guns as we can on a ship. So with that, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Okay, so moving into our first layer, we go ahead and start with layer number one. Now, if you're completely new to my uh, ship tutorials, the way I like to start these tutorials, I like to do half on camera, half off for the first few layers, mainly doing the whole. Um, so what that means is we're going to be building the entire center line of the ship and then the right side it will be up to you guys to take the right side and copy it over to the left side. It's pretty straightforward and shouldn't really be anything too complex so just make sure you follow along closely and you shouldn't have any problems. Um, in addition, for this layer here we do want to make sure that we position this, this layer correctly in the water. And basically to do that it's pretty simple, this right here, this blue line of concrete is representing the water level and then you can see here basically our layer that we're building right now, layer 1 is basically a block underneath the water level. Very important to make sure that, that is correct because obviously if it is not, the ship will not sit properly in the water and will look funky. So just make sure that, that is all correct and good to go. Anyways, with that sorted, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to place down a red concrete block and we want to go then follow this up with a brick up down stair. We're going to go then place down a row of brick top slabs. This is going to go all the way to the back of the ship here in total a row of 29. We then want to go back up to the front. We're going to count back one two into our third uh, slab here we're gonna place down two case with trap doors and then going off those we're gonna place down one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen and nineteen I'm gonna go and double check my count here and make sure that was correct and yep nineteen brick top slabs back followed by one two three and four a case with trap doors after that, on the very end here, we want to go ahead and then grab our yellow concrete. We're going to skip a space of 1, 2, 3, and 4. So 1, 2, 3, and 4 back. And we're going to go ahead and place down a case wood trap door here. Like so. And we then want to go ahead and delete these blocks in between those trap doors like that. After that's done, we want to go and then go to the sides here. We're going to go ahead and go 1, 2, 3, and our fourth brick top slab. Actually, sorry, our fifth uh, brick top slab back there from the front. We're going to place down a uh, acacia wood trap door, followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, acacia wood trap doors back. And the same thing is just going to be done over here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 in total. We should have four brick top slabs that stick out toward the front, and we should have three that stick out toward the back there. So that will be done on both sides like so. With that all out of the way though, that right there is going to conclude what we have there for layer 1. And with that, let's go ahead and move into layer number 2. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we'll be moving into layer number 2. For layer 2, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and place down a red stained glass, or sorry, red uh, concrete block on top of this one here in the front. We're going to go ahead and place down a red stained glass pane coming off that block toward the front there. Going back from this red concrete block, we want to go ahead and then place down a row of red concrete. That's going to go ahead and go back a row of 31 from the front. So in total, it's going to be a row of 32 uh, red concrete blocks here down the center. On the very end here, this last red concrete block should stick a block past this brick top slab. We're going to go ahead and place down two brick top slabs, come off that red concrete block like that toward the rear. Going back up to the front, we're going to place down a red stained glass plane next to this block, followed by a second one back, a brick wall, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26 red concrete blocks back, followed by a row of two or sorry, a brick up down stair, and then a brick, just actually one brick up down stair, and then a brick top slab, followed by another brick up down stair, on the back of that stair, a brick wall, and then a acacia wood trap door. After that, going back up to the front, we're going to place down a red uh, stained glass pane, coming off the second block right here, a second red stained glass block, or pane back, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, brick walls back, two brick top slabs, an acacia wood fence gate, a end rod, and a birch wood slab, just like that. And after that's all done right there, that right there is going to basically complete layer two. You're going to take the same thing we did on the right side, flip it over to the left side, and this is what you should have for the top down view for this layer. With that complete, that's it for layer two. Let's move on to layer three. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we're moving into layer number. Three. For layer 3 to start off with, we're going to place down a stone block on top of this red stained glass pane, and going back from that stone block, we're going to be going ahead and placing down a row of stone that's going to go ahead and go all the way back to that brick top slab on the end there, which is going to be a row of 34 in total. After we have that done, we want to go and then place down a uh, light gray stained glass pane, come up the side of this stone block here, 
and a second glass pane back, followed by a andesite wall, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one. Uh, stone blocks back and an andesite wall here on the end. We're gonna go then place down a light gray stainless paint coming off the side here. One forward and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, two, one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, and twenty-seven um, of these andesite walls forward, and then two uh, light gray stainless paints like that to go ahead and finish that off. That right there is going to conclude what we have there for layer number three. Take a look at the top down view. This is what we should have with that layer complete. Anyways, with that, let's move on to layer number four. All right, guys, moving into our next layer. We'll be moving into layer number four. For layer four to get started with here, we're going to place a tiny stone block on top of this one here, followed by a stone upside down stair coming off it going forward, and then a near stone block coming off this one like that. After that, we want to go ahead and place down a row of six of our gray wool back. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of acacia wood planks back which is in total going to be 21 back followed by three gray wool blocks and then three stone blocks and then an iron trap door there on the very end after that going back up to the front we want to go ahead and place down an iron frame which will be coming off the side here of this stone stair and then coming off the or in the iron frame rather we're going to go ahead and place down a crossbow and rotate so it's facing downwards we then want to place down two light gray stainless panes here and then a andesite wall Followed by a row of one, two, three stone blocks, two gray wool blocks, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and twenty-one um, blocks back. I'm gonna go double check my count here, and yep, it is twenty-one in case you would planks back. Followed by two gray wool blocks, two andesite walls, and two light gray stained glass panes, followed by an iron trap door. Again, going up to the front here, we're going to place down a light gray stainless paint coming off this stone block. One more back, and then a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And the side walls back, followed by a stone stair like so. And then a skeleton skull like that, and then a gray carpet on top of that wall like that. On the inside here also, we can go ahead and place down some gray wool blocks in this section here just to kind of help kind of keep that gray deck consistency a little bit better. So we'll just go ahead and kind of throw those in there a little bit in that section there. Anyways, after we have that all complete there, um, we then want to go ahead and go to the sides of the ship. And on the sides here, we're going to be going ahead and putting the ship number. So this is the Moskova, so this is going to have 121 um, as our basically um, number for the ship. And to do this, very simple, on the right side, we're going to go ahead and count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or so it's 6 wall back, we're going to place down a 1, 2, 1, like that on our banners. You can see I'm using light gray banners with the numbers in white, so that's what you want to do there for the side. And the same thing will be done over here, so you have 1, 2, 1, like that on the side of the ship to go ahead and make those numbers like so. Now, once you get to this point, um, this kind of turns into a feature of whether you're on uh, basically Java or um, a newer version of Minecraft. So being on Java, what it allows us to do is it allows us to use a tool called the debug stick. So give at p debug stick. So we'll use our debug stick here. And we're going to set a line of blocks that's going to be basically off to the side here, leaving a space of one from the side of our walls. And it's going to run all the way down, down the length of the ship. Now again, if you're on any other version of Minecraft, this really is going to work for you. So uh, you will have to basically uh, dis disregard this whole portion or build one yourself. Or figure out an alternative or whatever to this. Uh, but basically, as you can see, we're placing down polished blocks, no buttons all the way along the side here. And we're going to then select the buttons. And each one of these buttons, by crouching, we're going to go ahead and rotate these so that they are going to be connected up to these andesite walls. So... This right here is basically going to go all the way along the side here of these buttons, just like this on the side of these walls, like so. And after we have that done, uh, we then want to go ahead and take this and we're going to get rid of that. 
So, uh, with that all out of the way, that right there is going to basically do it for uh, what we have there for that layer, layer number four. And um, from there, uh, we'll move on to our next layer, layer number five. All right, guys, so moving into our next layer, we have layer four. For layer four to begin with, we're going to place down a end rod on top of this stair here, followed by an end or an iron bar on top of that. We then want to place down a gray carpet here, and then a red snare up here with a notch to spread apart. Uh, one thing I should also mention is that this layer here will have, uh, basically, we'll be doing this all together as this layer does have a lot of complicated detail and all that, so it's just easier for us to do it all together. Um, so just in case you are wondering, um, yeah, we're doing it together. Anyways, at this point here, we're going to go ahead and place down two dark oak fence gates like this along the side here, then two gray carpets to the side of those fence gates. At the end of those fence gates, we're going to place down an anvil like so, followed by skeleton skulls, which we wrapped around the anvil like that. We then want to place down a gray carpet on these stone blocks here to the sides. After that's done, we want to go and then place down a stone block here, followed by an end rod to both sides, and a andesite wall coming off those blocks like that, and then a dark oak wood um, sign here on the side of these walls, just like that. After that, uh, we want to go and then place down a stone upside down stair on both sides, and one thing to take note of is that um, your buttons may fall off. If your buttons do fall off with any of these block placements, make sure you do go ahead and replace them. Um, it is uh, unfortunate that it does happen, but some of these will disappear, some of these won't. So it's kind of weird, hit or miss. So just make sure that you do fix those if any of your buttons do fall off if you did that on the side there. Anyways, at this point here, uh, we're going to go then place down a... Try and double check what I did in here. Um, it's going to be a stone uh, brick full block to the sides here, like this, and then a stone block there in the center. We then want to place down two stone brick top slabs on both sides, a stone block in the center. And for this, we're just going to build back one, two, three, four, five, and six stone blocks down the center, just like that. And after we get to this point here, um, we want to go ahead and actually swap out this uh, stone upside down stair here and this section where we're going to go ahead and change this. So after the walls here, we're actually going to place down one, two stone brick top slabs, and same thing over here, one and two stone brick top slabs. We're going to then place down a stone upside down stair to both sides like so. And we're going to then place down an end rod in those spaces like that. We're going to then place down another two stone brick top slabs to both sides. Followed by again a stone upside down stair to the sides here. Then an end rod in between there. We're going to then place down another set of two stone brick top slabs like that. Followed by another upside down stone stair to both sides. Another end rod here in the centers. And then again, two stone brick top slabs across on both sides, and then two stone brick slabs across, like so. And again, you can see right there our button did disappear, so just make sure that gets replaced if you did those button, that button technique. We then want to take our stone blocks. We're going to place down a row of one, two, three, four, five stone blocks across this section here. And we then want to go ahead and place down a row of three of stone full blocks. And then a end rod there on both sides. After that, uh, we're going to go ahead and then grab our acacia wood planks. And we're going to go ahead and place down a row of three of acacia wood planks down the inside here. A stone block to both sides. Another row of three of acacia wood planks and another stone block to the sides there. Uh, we then want to place down a stone block in the center here. Followed by a iron trap door to both sides. And we're going to go ahead and place down a smooth quartz stair here to both sides. A second smooth quartz stair there on the back of that. And then a quartz slab coming off those stairs. We're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak wood sign on the sides here of these stairs like so a row of three of stone blocks across and a row of three like this across as well stone block in the center and an inside wall there to both sides along the sides here we're gonna take a gray carpet we're gonna place down one two three four five gray carpet and over here same thing one two three four and five gray carpet we then want to go to the inside here and place down two redstone repeaters like so and we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four skeleton skulls, one, two, three, and four. And we're going to go and follow this up. I place down two stone buttons here in the center, a stone block there, and in a side wall here to both sides. Followed by another row of three of stone blocks, stone block in the center here, and a side wall to both sides, another stone block back, and another and a side wall like that. We then want to go ahead and take our dark oak wood trap doors. We're going to place down one, two, three along the side here, and same thing over here, one, two, and three. And then following that, we're going to go ahead and grab item frames and white beds. We're going to place down item frames here. White beds in those item frames, just like that. And if you're on Java, we can place down dark liquid signs on the trapdoors as well. 
Now that right there is going to be a feature that's only available on Java. If you are on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, you will not be able to place down item frames and beds in the same block space. If that's the case, just go ahead and disregard the signs, just place down the item frames as a priority. But if you're on Java, we can do that extra bit of detail. At this point here in the back, we're going to place down an iron trap door on top of these two walls here, as well as a skeleton skull on this wall here to the right and the right side only. We then want to place down a acacia wood trap or acacia wood um, pressure plate, like so, a white carpet, acacia wood pressure plate, and a white carpet. We're going to place down a acacia wood pressure plate here to both sides of that white carpet up here, a white carpet on both sides of this acacia wood pressure plate, and then a acacia wood pressure plate on top of these two. Um, on top of those two uh, iron trap doors, just like that. And then lastly, come off this white carpet on the back here and place down a virtual fence gate, open it up toward it, and then just an end rod on top of that fence gate, like so. And after we have that done, one of the last things also is to place down a gray carpet on top of this and say wall, like that. And once you have that all done, uh, that right there is gonna basically complete this layer here. Just make sure that those buttons do get put back on there if you um, did hit, if you went ahead and had them earlier. Anyways, that right there is going to conclude layer number five, and with that, let's move on to layer number six. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we're moving into layer number six. For layer six, to see it to start with here, we're going to place down a daylight detector on top of the anvil, turn it to night mode. We're going to go then place down a skeleton skull here, followed by a stone stair located right here in this section, followed by an anvil and an air stone stair right here. Going back from that stone stair, we're going to place down one, two, three, and four stone full blocks, and then a daylight detector on the back here, turn to night mode. After we have that done, we want to go and go to the top of the end rods and stone brick walls here to place down two stone brick slabs and basically the same thing here for each one of these end rods and stone up downstairs. So you're just going to place down two stone brick slabs on top of those like that for our missile <clears throat> launchers. Like so. And then taking skeleton skulls, we're going to place down skeleton skulls coming off the side of these slabs facing toward the front. So just like that. After that, um, we do want to go ahead and make one change, which is going to be this section here. We actually want to go ahead and replace this uh, slab there for a stair, like so to both sides. After we have that done, uh, we want to go ahead and then place down a row of three of stone full blocks across this section here, followed by a stone stair to both sides. Uh, we then want to go ahead and place down a stone block here in the center, followed by a second, third, and fourth stone block, followed by a redstone repeater right here, one here, here and here and then a acacia wood pressure plate on top of those two end rods then taking skeleton skulls we're going to place down two skeleton skulls at angles like this along the sides and we're going to then follow this up and place down a wither skeleton skull on the side of this um, block as well as a acacia wood pressure plate on top of those two iron trap doors we then want to place down a row of three of stone blocks followed by a second row of three uh, we're going to then place down an anvil in the center like so, a acacia wood pressure plate to both sides of the anvil, and a dark oak wood sign coming off the anvil like this toward the back. Once we have that done, going back to this section here, we're going to place down a row of three of acacia wood pressure plates, a stone block here, a redstone repeater to both sides, and then an air stone block in the center, followed by a dragon's head on top of these two uh, walls like so, and then an end rod coming off those dragon heads like that facing toward the rear. Center here, we're going to place down a nurse stone block, and then a light gray stingless pane right there coming off that. And once you have that done and transferred over to both sides, that right there is going to conclude what we have there for layer number six. And uh, with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number seven. And so moving into our next layer, we have layer number seven. For layer seven, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a um, iron bar on top of this uh, stone stair right here, and we're going to go ahead and just place down three up. So three up like so, and then go into these stone brick slabs here to both sides of the anvil. We're going to place down three iron bars up as well for the time being. After this, uh, we want to go and then place down a stone upside down stair on top of this first stone block, followed by an item frame, which will be coming off this uh, stair like so, and in that item frame we're going to place down a black bed rotating on its side. Now if you're on Java, we can also go ahead and place down a skeleton skull, which will be on top of that um, stone stair there. Then we're going to go ahead and position it so that the face is facing toward the stair like so. On both sides of the stair, we're going to place down a um, skeleton skull. And then going back from the stair, we're going to place down two stone full blocks. Um, yes, yeah, two stone full blocks and then a stone stair like so. We're going to place down one, two, and three. Like racing with panes, and one, two, and three over here to the side of that. 
We also want to go ahead and place down a diorite wall, which will be on top of these two stairs like so. And we can also go ahead and if we have access to it, use our debug stick to actually go ahead and change the properties of the wall so that it does not connect up to the glass panes. So we'll just go ahead and alter this by changing the selected direction here. Um, we want to go ahead and do west now. So let's get west. So we'll have it like this and like that. Weird. This is being a little funky here. There we go. So it looks just like that. And you can see there that those glass panes aren't connecting up. If they do connect up, if you do not have access to a debug stick, it really isn't too much of a big deal. So um, just a little thing there you can kind of do to make it a little bit more accurate if you're on Java. We're going to go ahead and place down a grindstone on top of these two stairs here, as well as redstone repeaters like this on both sides and a acacia wood pressure plate there in the center. We then want to place it on an acacia wood slab, a dark oak wood sign to both sides of the slab. And after we have that done, we're going to then place down one and two stone blocks and then a stone stair right here. We're going to then place down a skeleton skull like this and then a wither skeleton skull next to it. Same thing over here as well. In this space here, we're going to place down an iron trap door coming off the side of the stair followed by a dark oak wood sign on the side of the iron trap door facing toward the outside. And then on the inside, or to the sides here, we're also going to place down two stone blocks like that to both sides. We then want to place down a stone brick slab here, and then a top slab coming off that going forward, as well as a lever, which will be coming off both sides of these first stone blocks, like so. On top of this uh, anvil, we're going to place down a stone brick wall, as well as a skeleton skull coming off the wall like that facing toward the rear. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves an anvil. We're going to place down an anvil here on top of this stone block. And we're going to go then place down a birchwood trap door like this coming off the anvil. And a skeleton skull will come off the back of it. And then taking our redstone repeater, we're just going to place down a redstone repeater on top of this stone block and separate the notches like so. And with that all done there, that is going to conclude layer number 7 for the build. And uh, with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our last final layers. All right, guys, moving into our final layers here, we have layers uh, 8 through 13. So let's go and get started. Uh, first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and go to the top here of this stone block. We're going to place down a dragon head facing forward and an rod coming off the face there of the dragon head. To both sides of, of it, of the end rod on top of these skeleton skulls, we're just going to place down uh, three iron bars going up like so. After that, we're going to go then grab chains and going up from the glass panes right behind them, we're going to place down three chains going up as well. So just like this. After that, uh, we want to go and then place down a skeleton skull, which will be on top of this glass pane. And like that on both sides. And then a stone block here in the center. After that stone block, uh, we do want to go and place down a andesite wall, followed by another stone block. And this right here is then going to be a light gray stained glass pane on the back here. Uh, we then want to place down a stone stair right here. Actually, my bad. Uh, this stone block right here where the glass pane is is actually going to be a stair like that. So it's going to be a stair like so. And then grabbing our dark oak fence gates, we're going to place down a fence gate coming off the side here of this pane. So to both sides. And then we're going to go back and out to the side at an angle to both sides there for our mass. And then we're going to have one fence gate coming off this glass pane toward the rear there like so. Uh, we then can also go ahead and grab ourselves some barrier blocks, and we're just going to go ahead and place down a barrier block, uh, which will be coming off of this skeleton skull. So right here on both sides, and we're just going to wrap stone buns around the two sides that we can for that barrier block. Now going ahead and continuing on from this point, we then want to go ahead and place down a andesite wall on top of this glass pane. And we're going to then grab a cobweb and place down a cobweb back from it as well as a iron trap door which we will grab from right here and we're going to place down an iron trap door coming off of it on top of the iron trap door another andesite wall and then two iron bars up like so we're going to go and then place down an andesite wall on top of this one here followed by an end rod coming off that wall like that uh, we're then going to go ahead and we're then going to go ahead and place down a dark oak trap door uh, like this to both sides and have those opened so it's going to be kind of on top of this section here and open forward like that for a little bit of a radar and then taking our iron bars we're just going to place down a row of three coming off the opposite side of this wall like this and another row of three up on top of that row of three so that would kind of do our front mass like so after that moving to our rear section we're going to place down a stone block here followed by a light gray stained glass pane on both sides like so 
and then a skeleton skull which will be coming off both sides of this glass pane like that. We're going to go then grab ourselves a barrier block. So we're going to go from this skeleton skull up a barrier block and then we're going to go up one more and forward one at an angle like so. Same thing over here, barrier block here and one up and forward like that. Grabbing stone buttons, we're also going to place down stone buttons on the sides there of these barrier blocks like that going up there for those um, rigging. Now at this point back here, uh, we want to go and then grab a dark oak defense gate. We're going to place down one coming off both sides of this stone block here. As well as we're going to go ahead and grab iron bars and place them down, place down a row of three going up from these skeleton skulls here. And then going ahead and grabbing chains, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing, just on the other skeleton skull with this time with chains. So chains going up for a row of three. On the very top here of uh, the stone block, we're going to place down an andesite wall fall by a stone brick stair. Coming off the stone brick stair, we're going to place down an end rod that goes toward the back here, like so. And then we want to go then grab dark oak wood trap doors. We're going to place down a block coming off both sides of this end rod. And then we're going to place down trap doors on the sides of these blocks and close them or open them, however you want to look at it, like so. So they lay flat there against the stair. Then we want to go ahead and go off the top slab here, place down a polished black stone slab, and then we're going to place down three iron bars like that, and then a polished black stone slab on the center iron bar like so to complete this mass here. Go ahead and continue now, we're going to place down a polished black stone slab on top of those two stone blocks, a daylight detector after those, turn to night mode, and then grabbing ourselves some iron bars, we're going to place down three iron bars that go up from these end rods, so one, two, three, and over here same thing, one, two, and three. After we have uh, that all done right there, that right there is going to pretty much complete our design here for the Mos Moskova uh, Slava class guided missile cruiser. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this design and are able to put it to good use. If you do want to use this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This will be thing from the side of the build. Tweet to my channel or this video if this does appear on social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to use for projects you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is McGarrett 204, and I'll see you guys next time.